Hi, John here. Uh, in this video, I want to just give a quick lesson on expounding the scriptures. Let's take a look what I'm talking about here. Here is the Bible that Lewis Klopsch uh, originally printed in 1901. Um, I've talked about that before in other videos. You can check those out. He rubricated or gave red print to the Old Testament, for example, right there. And uh, what I did then was... Uh, facsimile this into these uh, volume one and two. Why is this Bible important? Um, not only was it the first uh, red print Bible, but um, like I said, he highlighted the Old Testament in red print. And that kind of gives us some information about Jesus that today we don't see in our uh, red print Bibles. So I want to go over a few things about uh, expounding on the scriptures. At the time of Christ, uh, the New Testament did not exist. Um, in Luke 24, uh, verses 20, 25 through 27, uh, verse 32, and verse verses 44 through 49, Jesus pointed to the Old Testament scriptures, uh, the Tanakh, uh, which is what Jewish uh, name for the Old Testament is, uh, concerning himself. That is, he mentions back in history and references to history. And let me go there, uh, Luke 24, 25. Okay, so Jesus says, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart uh, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So Jesus is using the Old Testament there. And so he's, he's referencing back. And um, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So uh, emphasize the, the, the word expounded there and uh, the scriptures. Um, what scriptures is he talking about? The New Testament wasn't around. He's talking about the Old Testament, and um, obviously. And so, uh, and these are what? Concerning himself, in verse 27. Notice that he goes back uh, to the written word, the most reliable form of historical evidence, uh, not tradition, not objects, although these can be reliable um, but he goes to the most reliable type of source, and that's the scriptures. Um, and, and, and that gives it kind of a more research or uh, evidence-based uh, historical uh, reference that he's uh, giving there. And uh, then in verse 32, he says, And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, so there again, he opens to them the scriptures. What scriptures? Again, the Old Testament. Uh, then uh, we'll jump up to verse 44 and 45. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, Old Testament, and in the prophets of the Old Testament, and in the Psalms concerning me. So again, this is concerning him that, and it's a matter of uh, uh, grasping and seeing that in the Old Testament, and the, the rubricated edition here enables you to see that in the Old Testament. We'll go to one, we'll go to a, a, a chapter that, uh, that highlights that. But uh, Let's see, let me continue with uh, verses 46 to 47 here. I'm jumping real quick through these to make this short. So then in 46, uh, he says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. He's giving, essentially, uh, saying that the Old Testament is revealing the, the this gospel and and the the gospel of Jesus, which is that he he'd had to die and suffer for our sins, and that is uh, reflected in the Old Testament, and uh, this is what he's pointing out here. Okay, so then in verse forty nine, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So 
this is where um, he is speaking of the, the the Holy Spirit coming upon them to anoint them to give the gospel, to preach the good news to not only the Jews, but to the world. And so uh, we'll jump also to uh, John chapter 5, verse 39. We'll back up to 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. What the, he was referring to, the Jews were not believing believing that he was the Christ. And so he reveals, uh, he says, he goes on saying, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. So um, he's saying that the scriptures, the Old Testament, are what testify of him. And they were so caught up in their rules and regulations, in their religiosity, that they were missing seeing the Messiah, uh, Jesus. And uh, in the Old Testament. And so, uh, you know, likewise, the uh, Old Testament is what the apostles um, and early church fathers used to preach from as uh, the New Testament was in development. So understanding Christ in the Old Testament is crucial to understanding Christianity. Um, the Apostle Paul points to the Old Testament witness of Christ, uh, the Messiah, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 4. Let's jump there. And uh, uh, Louis Klopsch used the um, authorized version, which is the King James Version, when he did this edition. And uh, he had scholars aid him in and so so you're you, uh, you know it uses kind of old uh, old english uh, more uh, uh, you know uh, king james language but uh, let's see Okay, so reading from uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And uh, here, uh, Apostle Paul writes, um, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Uh, so there he's talking about the Old Testament scriptures again. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And there again, according to the scriptures. He's referring to the Old Testament. That the Old Testament gave the gospel and spoke of Jesus, the Messiah. So now this is where this particular uh, version of the Bible comes in very handy. And uh, we'll go to the Old Testament. Those were the New Testament passages referencing, you know, the expounding on the scriptures references that Jesus and Paul uh, mentions to uh, the regarding the Old Testament. So looking now at the Old Testament, we'll go to Isaiah. And this is probably the, the, the best example for anyone to see. Isaiah chapter 53. This was written thousands of years prior to Christ, but yet you see the prophecy here. Um, and in this case, the uh, because it's referring to the uh, prophet's prophetic uh, utterance of uh, the Messiah and uh, Jesus, it's highlighted by red stars. And you'll see those red stars right there. Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. This is all obviously uh, becoming apparent that it's referring to um, to Christ as you begin to, to, to notice some of the, the, the description here of the Messiah. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement 
chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So this particular verse, verse 5, is essentially revealing that the Messiah was to be treated as just as Jesus was treated, uh, abused, stricken, beaten, crucified. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. So he's the, the sacrificial lamb. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And um, where I wish I could take a lot more time to go into this in detail. Um, it's really uh, amazing, um, but I'm trying to get through this quickly. So this video is not too long. Um, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering of sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Uh, shall my righteous servant just justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Uh, in Isaiah 53, in verse 12, the red stars are indicating uh, the prophecy uh, of the Messiah, and um, it has uh, highlight in red. And with that highlight in red, it, it means that Jesus referred to this passage here. Uh, gives us the reference where Jesus made this allusion or reference uh, or quoted this passage. Um, and so we see the center column reference to Mark uh, 15, 28, and then also Luke 22, 37. So jumping to uh, Luke 22, verse 37. Um, let's see, and it says, And in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And it says he's numbered with the transgressors. If we look at Mark 15, 28, um, we'll see, and it says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And uh, so what was that? What did that mean? He was uh, associating with sinners. And and then also the reference in uh, Luke twenty two thirty seven it gives a uh, cross reference to here where it says and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple uh, and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives so he went out to the Mount of Olives and gave you know like the Olivet discourse if you're familiar with that um, where he uh, preaches to the crowd and uh, verse thirty it says, And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. So in the morning he was in the temple, and the evening he was out with the uh, with the crowds um, or sinners uh, preaching the gospel, the good news, God's forgiveness. And so um, those are the passages that relate to this right here. And um, in the New Testament, so you have the correlation of the New Testament to the Old Testament or the fulfillment as well of that. Uh, passage here in the Old Testament. So that wraps that up. Um, so just wanted to give a quick overview of how uh, Jesus uh, referenced uh, expounding on the Old Testament scriptures and then also how Paul uh, uh, also used and preached uh, and the, the, the early church fathers preached from the Old Testament as the New Testament was being written and how the Old Testament reveals Christ. So um, also, let's see, where you, where can you get this um, two-volume 
uh, set of uh, uh, facsimile of Lewis Klopsch's uh, first complete edition of the Bible. Um, if you go to my website, so if you go to uh, this URL and uh, if you take you here you just scroll down to uh, American uh, rubricated American Heritage Bible now available in hardback and you can click on either uh, both of these buttons purchase volume one and then purchase volume two um, I am trying to bring the price down with printing uh, also a paperback and so as you scroll down to these uh, green buttons here um, if you click on those uh, take you to this is the new cover um, volume one and then uh, also the new cover for volume two so until next time uh, god bless thanks